Welcome in the fourth section of Apache Cassandra course and in this section we will be looking at the data modeling principles. So we will see how to model data to reflect how Cassandra is built and how to fully leverage Apache Cassandra to gain low latency and good performance. So we'll be looking at the primary key and clustering key more in deep. We'll be looking at the denormalization design for the read and we'll be optimizing brilliant write. So this is a first video and it will be explaining concept of primary key and cluster ordering and why this is so important to understand them properly. So first we will look at what is a primary key, then what is a clustering key and how to model data using primary and clustering key. So let's say that we have a simple primary key. So we want to create a table videos that has video ID, name, description and added timestamp. And primary key is a, is a video ID. So first element in our primary key is what we call a partition key. Then partition key has a special use in Apache Cassandra beyond showing the uniqueness of the record in the database. The other purpose and one that very critical in distributed system is determining data locality. When data is inserted into the cluster, the first step is to apply a hash function to the partition key. The output is used to determine what node and replicas will get that data. The algorithm used by Apache Cassandra utilizes Murmur 3, which will take an arbitrary input and create a consistent token value. The token value will be inside the range of tokens owned by a single node. So why primary key is so important? A partition key will always belong to one node and that's partition data will always be found on that node. And why this is important? Because if there wasn't an absolute location of partition data, then it would require searching every node in the cluster for your data. In a small cluster, this might complete quickly, but in the much larger cluster, it will be a painfully slow. So this is an example of select. So we inserted our data to our 1000 node Cassandra cluster and we want to select using partition key video ID that is equal to that UID. And because of the partition algorithm, that hashing algorithm, we can be sure that after applying that function, that value for that specific partition resides on the specific Cassandra node. Second very important concept in Cassandra is clustering key. So let's create a table user videos that has user ID, added timestamp, video ID, name and previous image location and it has primary key that is compound. So we have user ID as a primary clustering key and added date and video ID as a clustering key. Primary key now has more than the partition key. We have now added more elements and all columns listed after the first partition key are called clustering columns. And why and when we want to use clustering key? So the clustering column specifies the order that the data is arranged inside the specific partition. So item 1 is the partition key. Item 2 is the first clustering column. At the date is a timestamp, so the sort order is chronological, ascending. Item 3 is the second clustering column. Since video ID is an UID, it is included it, so simply show that this is a part of a unique record. So let's query some data using our partition and clustering key. So we have a select that will return data in ascending order, but by added date within a single partition. So we are selecting user ID 1, so this is a specific partition and then we have data ordered by added date because this is a clustering key. And we can select in ascending way and descending way using same partition key. So we can use select start from user videos where user ID is equal to partition key 
and then we can sort it by added date because this is a clustering key descending. That query will use the same clustering key, but it will reverse results. 